How do you come to expect something that hasn't manifested? So you say, well, money isn't coming easy to me, and I'd like to be like that guy, I'd just like to expect it. But how do you expect something that hasn't been happening when you've been noticing what's been happening? What's the obvious answer? You have to notice a little less what's been happening. You have to stop taking score of what is. You have to find some way to put what is where it belongs. You have to put what is where it belongs in the past tense category. What is no longer matters because what is does not have to continue to be the regurgitated active vibration. What is doesn't have to be the active vibration. What's wanted can be the active vibration. But what's the payoff for you? What are you going to focus on in order to stay focused on the vibrational reality rather than the manifested reality? How do you get yourself to focus forward instead of backwards? How do you stop looking at what is when what is is so compelling? Something else has to be equally compelling. Let's play with this just for a moment. Do you enjoy a feeling of clarity? Do you? Do you like to feel so clear in your mind that you know exactly what you're doing? You know, when you click into that, you know, those moments in time when clarity is just so strong that it feels to you like you just can't get it wrong at least not right now things are just really clicking for you is that something worth focusing on and is it a condition or is it an uncondition we know these words sound awkward to you but we're wanting to somehow cajole you into not facing reality anymore your reality is the platform that you bounce off of but if you let it be what you are giving your undivided attention to, your reality will hold you apart from your motion forward. So you have to find a way to put reality where it belongs, which is past tense, it's old news. What's already manifested isn't where the sweet spot it is, isn't where the action is, it isn't where the energy is, it isn't where the fun is, it isn't where the leading edge is, it isn't where the new ideas are. It's the hatching of the new idea, it's the experience of the new rendezvous, it's the turning the vibration into a thought, it's the receiving of the thought, it's the conscious awareness that you've received a thought, it's the emotional feeling of worthiness that the thought has come and the emotional feeling of positive expectation that that's going to amount to something and every single thing you want no matter what it is material object state of being lover in your bed pile of money doesn't matter what it is every single thing you want is because you believe you will feel better in the having of it so if we can get you to just for two days just for two days say what's the feeling that I'm reaching for what's the feeling so as you offer that vibration and we began using the word spew because we wanted you to feel the 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 spewing of it the the offering of it outward because we wanted you to get the sense of the way it moves out beyond you and affects everything that you walk into for a while so as you're offering negative comments about your financial state of being you keep sort of muddying up the waters ahead of you and making it less possible for you to see with any clarity the things that could work out for you you're muddying up your own water so to speak and that if you would stop doing that the water would clear and then the other night Esther was eager to watch that big cap tighten down on the gushing oil in the Gulf and as she sat there and saw for the first time in a very long time that well no longer offering that oil Esther remembered this analogy that now it has stopped the feeling of it dissipating and becoming a non subject is understandable isn't it as long as it was still spewing it was like you couldn't clean it up fast enough you couldn't begin to clean it up until it stopped spewing there just weren't enough boats on the planet or enough hoses on the planet or enough containment on the planet it, it was just messing the water up faster than anyone could clean it up 
And that's what you sometimes do with your negative comments, with your negative beliefs. As they keep coming, you just keep messing up the water. And if you would stop the commentary, it is our promise to you that the natural resources that surround you would clear it. And in that clarity, you will return to who you really are. It's one of the best real time analogies that has come along for a while because you can feel that in your own experience, have you ever had a relationship and you just keep it stirred up? In other words, every time you think of it, you just get mad all over again. And almost as soon as you think of it, you start talking about it and then you start remembering and then other things like it start showing up in your experience and you think, will I ever, ever, ever be rid of this? Is that negative experience going to follow me? Is it going to dog me all the days of my life? And we say, not as soon as you stop talking about it, not as soon as you stop thinking about it. If you think about, have you ever had, some have, some haven't, men and women both, mostly men, but it happens, a fist fight with someone. Well, they deserved it. We all know they deserved it. But you, you came to that point where you were actually came to physical blows. But there was a point before you threw that punch that if you had held back from it, it would have been better. It would have been better before your nose was broken, wouldn't it? It would have been better before they put you in jail, wouldn't it? In other words, wouldn't have holding back been better, even though it didn't seem like it in the moment. Thinking back on it, wouldn't have holding back have been better. Have you ever had an argument with someone where you were so right and they thought they were so right and you were determined to make them understand your rightness and they were determined to make you understand their rightness and so you just argued and argued and argued and argued until there was hardly any life left in either one of you and they didn't understand you, did they? Wouldn't it have been better if you had just held back before you crossed that sensitive line? <laughs> and so in the same way of holding back from the punches and holding back from the argument, we want you to consider the true power in even stopping earlier in this spewing process, in the setting the tone of what's out there process. We want you to think in terms of what you are vibrationally setting yourself up to be the point of attraction of, because what's active in your vibration is your point of attraction. One day a woman argued with us about that. She said, Abraham, I was driving down a very busy freeway and just to prove her point to us about how positive she was and how screwy law of attraction was, she said, and I was listening to one of your recordings at the time. <laughs> Doesn't get any more positive than that. I was listening to your recording and I was pulled over by a police officer and given a ticket. And we said, what was a ticket for? And she said, not wearing a seatbelt. And we said, what do you think about that? And she said, I think it's absurd. I don't think I should have to wear my seatbelt. I think I was born into the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I think I should be able to be brave enough and free enough to drive around without my seatbelt on. I don't think it's anybody else's business whether I wear a seatbelt or not. I don't know what he thought he was doing, pulling me over. I wasn't causing anyone. Any she got quite animated quite fast. And it became quite evident that even though she was listening to one of our recordings, she had something unresolved percolating there in her vibrational pattern. And that it's not possible for her to be driving on the freeway without wearing, without belligerently and rebelliously not wearing her seatbelt. She wasn't just nonchalantly and uncaringly and whimsically not wearing her seatbelt. She was defiantly not wearing her seatbelt. And we said, you were driving along, sending a beam out of the roof of your car that said, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. You want trouble? I'll give you trouble. And here's this policeman. He is, he is actually in a much better state of mind than she was. He was out trolling for revenue. And they were a perfect vibrational match for one another. 
Law of attraction brought them together in the precise way that law of attraction always does. It was perfect co-creation, co-creation at its very best, really. So what we want to say to you, we want, well, you hear it. We want you to gather from all of that, that you are offering signals all the time. And sometimes your signal matches with unwanted things. And sometimes your signal matches with wanted things. And when the signal that you're offering really resonates with the wholeness of who you are, you feel wonderful, but even more important. Well, there is nothing more important than feeling wonderful, but even more evident is manifestations have to match that signal of alignment. They just have to, you can't get something unwanted when you are tuned in, tapped in, turned on with who you are. You just can't. Now she wanted us to believe that I was listening to a good feeling recording. We said, that's like putting a happy face sticker on your empty gas gauge, just because it bothers you to see the tank empty. <laughs> now you've got a happy face sticker on it. It's not so troublesome, but it won't keep you from running out of gas. And the same thing is true of your vibrational patterns. In other words, we want you to become more aware of what you're offering vibrationally.